G'day guys, my name's Dave and welcome to another Guitar Zero to Hero song tutorial. In this lesson, I'm going to teach you how to play an acoustic version of Tonight Tonight by the Smashing Pumpkins. And this is based off Billy Corgan's live acoustic performance on the Howard Stern Show. You can check that out in the link in the description below. For the basics, you won't need a capo, but you will need to detune your guitar to flat tuning. So from standard tuning, you will take every single string down half a step. So E to E flat, A to A flat, D to D flat, G to G flat, B to B flat, and the high E to E flat. I'll leave a link in the description below to my favorite tuning app if you don't already have a tuner. Now, if you're on Master Chords back to front, then be sure to head over to guitarzerotohero.com to pick up my free guitar ebook. Or if you want to improve in your guitar in general, then sign up to Guitar Zero to Hero Premium, which is my complete step-by-step -step guitar course. Let's jump into the lesson. Okay, so let's start with intro part one. We're gonna start with a G chord, except you don't need to push down your ring and pinky finger. You just need to focus with your middle and index finger for this G chord. Just ensure that you don't pluck the open first string though when you're strumming this. So focus on the lower strings when we're strumming. Then we have G sus four. So to play the G sus four, we'll take our free ring finger and put on the third fret of the fifth string. So that's G sus four. So let's take a look at the easiest strumming pattern first, which is something like this. Down, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, down, up, up, down, up. And the point at which we'll change to the G sus4 is in the second bar or on the highlighted down strum you see below. So the first line of chords, G to G sus4. So that's it for the first line of chords and that's repeated through twice. And for the second line of chords, we go to an E minor and then an E minor seven flat 13. So what Billy Corgan actually does when he plays this live is he takes his ring finger, puts on the third fret of the fifth string and pinky finger goes on the third fret of the second string. We're gonna apply the same strumming pattern here that we had for the G to the G sus four. So the E minor to the E minor seven flat 13. And that's played through twice as well. So intro part one just sounds like this. So that's the easiest strumming pattern, but now let's take a look at the strumming pattern that Billy actually plays. Now it's pretty much identical to the easy strumming pattern, except at the very end, instead of one last up strum, we're gonna be playing a quick down up. So all together, down, down up, down up, down up, down, down up, up, down, down up. And you put that together with the chords and it will sound like this. So that's intro part one. Next we get to intro part two. We're gonna play a C add nine, so middle finger on the third fret of the fifth string, index on the second fret of the fourth, and then ring finger on the third fret of the second string. And you can leave that first string open. We're strumming from the fifth string onwards. C add nine, and then we go to a G slash B. So lift your index and middle finger, put your index finger on the second fret of the fifth string. And we're just focusing on those middle four strings for the G slash B and then we go to a D sus two. Now the strumming pattern for the C add nine to the G slash B is down, down, up, down, down, up. And the point at which we change chords is on the three beat. So one and two and three and four. And, and then when we go to our D sus two, it's down, down, up, up, down, up. So the first line of chords, one, Now that first line of chords is played through three times and then we go back to our G to G sus4. But this strumming pattern has changed a little bit. When we go to our G sus4, it's just down, down, up, and then we pause. 
So that's it for intro part two, which sounds like this. So next we get to verse number one and there's a really cool flat picked riff here. So what we're going to do is take our index finger and put on the third fret of the fifth string. Now our picking pattern is going to go something like this. For our first group of three notes it's fifth string and then with an up pluck we go second and third. So down, up, up with our picking motion. We do that twice. And then one more down pluck on the bass note, and then one more up pluck on the second string. So that picking pattern all together. And then we're going to take our ring finger, put on the fifth fret of the fifth string, and play the exact same picking pattern. For the first line of tab, we keep alternating between that third fret and the fifth fret picking pattern. So. That's it for the first line of tab, and then we move on to the second and third line of tab. We're just going to keep continuing on, alternating between the third fret picking pattern and the fifth fret picking pattern. So we alternate between those two picking patterns a total of three times, and then for the third bar of the second line of tab, we then shift our ring finger up to the seventh fret of the fifth string. We play a picking pattern here, and then we go up to the tenth fret. So the second and third line of tab all played together. That second and third line of tab are played through twice for verse number one. So next we get to pre-chorus one and what we're going to do is actually continue on with that main riff. So plucking the third fret picking pattern and fifth fret picking pattern. That's going to be played through three times. Now on the very last time you're playing the fifth fret picking pattern, you can play the picking pattern like normal, or you can just start strumming a down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up on the middle four strings, so the fifth, fourth, third, and second strings. That's completely up to use, but if you'd want to do that, this is what it'd sound like the very last time you play that riff. So next we move on to the second line of chords, and we have G to D slash F sharp. So lift your index and middle finger and put them on the second frets of the sixth and third string. Now for the G to the D slash F sharp, we have a strumming pattern that goes down, down, up, down, down, up. And the point at which it will change chords is like three beat. So down, down, up, down, down, up. Then we go to an E minor, and we're gonna play this with a down, down, up, up, down, up. Then an A minor, the same strumming pattern, and that C with the same strumming pattern. So the second line of chords. For the third line of chords, it's identical, except we're adding an extra C chord there. So that's it for pre-chorus number one, which will sound like this in total.
Next we get to chorus number one and there's three lines of chords here. We're gonna start with our C add nine to G slash B to D sus two. So very similar to what we had in intro part two and the same strumming patterns apply as well. So that first line of chords. That first line of chords is played through three times. And then we get to our second line of chords where we start with our E minor. And this is gonna be played for a down, down, up, up, down, up. And then we go to an A minor and then an A sus two. That strumming pattern is gonna be down, 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 up. And we change to the A sus two, lifting our index finger on the three beat. One, two, three, four. And the third line of chords is the same as the first line of chords, just played through twice. So chorus number one. Then we get to verse number two, and verse number two is actually identical to intro part one. So we've already learnt that, nothing new to learn there. The next section to learn is pre-chorus number two. It's almost the same as pre-chorus number one, so we start with that riff played through three times. Now for the second line of chords, we're just going to play that through twice. That's the only difference. Then we get to chorus number two, which is the same as chorus number one, except for that third line of chords, we're only playing it once and not twice. So again, nothing new to learn, but you do need to make note of how the structure of the chord progression just changes a tiny bit. Next, we get to the bridge. Now, the bridge is basically the same as the second line of chords in the pre-chorus. So where we go G, D slash F sharp, E minor, A minor, and C, which sounds like this. So that first line of chords is played through five times and then the second line of chords is identical but when we hit that C, we're just gonna strum it and let it ring out for two bars. So that's it for the bridge. And finally we have the outro where we're going to play the riff. So that riff that's in the pre-choruses and verse number one, we're gonna play that through three times and then we're going to end with the G, D slash F sharp and then E minor. So the outro. And those are all the parts that you need to learn for this song. So overall, it's pretty simple, but the trickiest part is remembering all the variations to the chord progressions. Billy Corgan likes to change things up a lot in this song, and it's not your simple verse, chorus, verse, chorus, with four chords repeated throughout. But overall, a really fun song to play, some great licks, and some easy chord shapes. So now I'll be doing a full playthrough of the song and I'll have a vocal track on top for some context. A big thanks to my friend Eric for lending his awesome vocals to this playthrough. Feel free to play this back as many times as you'd like to, to practice, play along to, and see how you go.
Thanks so much for watching. If you've enjoyed this lesson, then I know you'll absolutely love these other lessons too. So hit the link here, or if you want to grab a copy of my free guitar ebook, then head over to guitarzeritohero.com or click the link here. Thanks so much, and I'll see you guys next time on Guitar Zero to Hero. Cheers.